so our previous implementation of Descartes uh, had some intrinsic limitations that prevented it from being uh, fully useful on uh, very large applications. So if we have a robot on a rail or mobile robots, uh, large workspaces were limited. So having identified that uh, shortcoming, we have uh, begun a process of uh, replacing large swaths of it to hopefully unlock some new capabilities moving into this large workspace domain. Uh, before we get started, I'll do a brief overview of what Descartes is, in case anyone's not familiar with it. Um, it is our process planner. So process planners are a subtype of motion planner, um, the alternative being free space planners, which uh, just connect uh, point A to point B, and you don't really care about what happens in between, um, in contrast to process planners, which are for planning a toolpath where what happens in between your waypoints is very important. You want to keep your end effector along your workpiece or uh, maintain a certain angle, force, et cetera. Um, so uh, both free space and process planning involve graph searching and uh, sampling your joint space, uh, but they go about it differently. So on the right here, we have a little ladder graph. Um, this is what a process planner like Descartes uses where each rung of the ladder corresponds to the joint samples that are generated from a given tool point. So all of the nodes in this rung correspond to configurations that reach the same point in space. And our current implementation of Descartes, or the previous one rather, um, would construct this graph fully before it searched and found the optimal path. However, this led to some problems when we started adding more degrees of freedom to our system. So if we added a linear rail, for instance, um, we would go from eight solutions per waypoint to uh, dozens or even hundreds. Um, and this in of itself wouldn't be too much of a problem, except for the entire graph had to be constructed first. And while each rung would grow linearly, the edges would grow exponentially. And this would cause some runaway memory footprint problems. Um, we have shown this a little bit on the right here, just from one of our demonstration problems. Uh, and this would challenge even our largest computers that we had working here. Uh, so to compensate for this, for our uh, uh, current projects in these large workspace domains, is we would use smaller tool paths. So you wouldn't be able to take full advantage of the full reign of your system, uh, which could cause slower processing. You could be more sensitive. Uh, if you try to prune off certain states, you may not be able to find your solution because it's been excluded from the space. Um, or we would even plan the external axis separate from the robot. So you would move your robotic arm into the correct position, and then you would work purely from that static location. So ultimately, these limitations were inherent to this fully connected graph model we are using. So our approach now is to replace that and to do dynamic graph construction. So the first step to this was actually replacing the core infrastructure of our Descartes Lite library. We are now uh, employing Boost graph library. Um, anyone who's a developer in C++ is probably familiar with Boost. They have lots of handy functionality. Uh, but we selected Boost because it allows for more systematic development. It has pre-existing containers for nodes, edges, and the methods for introspecting both of those. And it comes with its own search algorithms already implemented, which is great for discovering how to write algorithms within the framework and for comparing our own. Uh, additionally, Boost ships with its own uh, introspection tools for benchmarking. So we are able to see what's working and what's not without having to burn a lot of our own development time creating introspection tools. So now that we've replaced the guts of our uh, actual library, we've uh, begun working on this dynamic graph construction. So this is actually how those free space planners I talked about earlier uh, do their searches. They will uh, dynamically construct a graph through Cartesian space to find a, a, a route between the waypoints, not necessarily the optimal one. And so we are adapting this approach for use in these configuration space ladder graphs. Um, and the benefits of this is that we'll only allocate the edges that we add to the graph so we can cut down on our memory footprint. And preliminary testing is showing that this can take as little as 10% of the original graph and still arrive at satisfactory uh, solutions. 
So uh, getting a little deeper into the weeds with this, um, our implementations so far have been focused on modifying Dijkstra's algorithm uh, to focus on doing some depth first searching. So Dijkstra's algorithm is uh, deterministic. It will arrive at the optimal solution, um, but it will explore the entire graph. So uh, what we've done this for this is we've created a subgraph, just adding edges to nodes of interest and run this optimal search algorithm over, over that subgraph. Um, and this limits the span, but still gives us an optimal depth first search within that space. Um, and so far as we go into adding nodes, uh, we are using modifications of uh, rapidly exploring random trees, RRT, uh, also adapted from the free space planning domain. Um, but the benefits of this is that it's parameterizable. So for our benchmarking problems, we may give a threshold cost it needs to get below, and it will continue randomly exploring until it reaches that. Uh, which is useful for a sterile environment. But for actual applications, you'll likely want to have a time constraint. So you can give the system five minutes or three minutes or whatever time you have to find the best path it can find, and it will terminate after that. Um, but one benefit of this is if given infinite time, it will arrive at optimal solution. Uh, obviously, providing infinite time is rarely itself an optimal approach. Um, but also, this framework is expandable. Uh, RRT really defines a family of searching algorithms. And so the way we've gone about implementing this should allow us to modularly switch those in and out without too much heartache. Um, so our final phase of this is leveraging uh, the open motion planning libraries, free spacing algorithms. We're working on creating an interface so that we can pull those directly into Descartes and use them to search over this ladder graph. Um, which will be useful because OMPL contains uh, a lot of free space searching algorithms that would be useful for be uh, benchmarking as well as just seeing if they can outperform our approach. And as OMPL grows or other external libraries become available, we hope that this interface uh, will allow us to continue uh, integrating external sources without uh, having to reinvent the wheel. Uh, and finally, a lot of this graph construction is dependent on the actual architecture of the graph, or the searching rather is dependent on the architecture. So we are reevaluating our approach to sampling and evaluating samples so that we may maintain a consistent configuration through the graph. So we will organize the ladder rungs so that the robot will be encouraged to stay within the same position um, and we can select nodes ideally that will maintain the same configuration and only add those to the graph uh, and then only search into configuration flips when it's absolutely necessary and this should hopefully speed searching and improve the fidelity of the paths that come out so with all these new capabilities what do we hope we're able to do we're hoping to apply this to uh, large space robotics uh, so mobile-based robotics and uh, linear rails gantry systems. Uh, the idea is that this will enable a lot more flexibility. We can have our robots working around uh, more complicated geometries. We can be tackling larger tool paths. Um, in the case of mobile robotics, we might be able to uh, enable flexible tasking. So if for one job you only need to work within the joint space of your robot arm, you can do that. But without needing a separate system, you may also be able to switch tools and run a much larger tool path. Um, and uh, finally, we really hope that this guaranteed planning time, being able to have a deterministic, uh, consistent uh, planning pipeline uh, will be useful for uh, lots of these uh, repeated operations with gantries and large ro uh, robot systems. So to summarize, uh, we've identified a limitation within Descartes that was preventing it from being uh, fully optimal for large scale systems. We've ripped out the guts of our library, uh, implemented some new search algorithms, and are increasing our uh, interface ability for leveraging external code. And we hope that these changes will empower some new developments in mobile robotics and linear rails. And with that, I will open it up for questions. So quick question, Colin. Absolutely. So the Descartes-like isn't 
you're not required to use Boost Graph, correct? It, it does define a set of interfaces where I think the primary implementations are using it, but we have others that are not. Is that correct? Yes, we did not break our interfaces. So the legacy systems are still available, but all of our future or ongoing development work has been leveraging this new Boost um, architecture. But yes, you are correct. The old methods are still present. Yeah, so if somebody else had other graph library they wanted to use, but still leverage some of the other components of Descartes, they would be able to do that. They would just have to implement their own solve. Hey, Colin, uh, this is David Pietracola here. Uh, uh, thanks for the update. Uh, just a quick question. Um, do you see any any synergies here or, or potential um, overlap with what move it to is looking at with um, kind of combining planning uh, between a manipulator and a mobile base. Uh, I hope we can explore those synergies a little bit. I have not been following the development of move it uh, fully, um, but I have uh, been working with some of our developers that are more involved on that side of things. So the, the hope is that these will um, be uh, yes mutually beneficial.